I pray, Lord, that you give us victory, O oh God, in all arenas, O oh God. I pray, Lord, O oh God, that you even allow us to get victory, O oh God, and tonight's basketball game as well. <laughs> but, Lord, we pray that you will have your way. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good evening. We've got $52 billion out there to provide health care for working people, for poor people, for people who need it. There are a lot of communities who are taking advantage of it. A lot of states who are taking advantage of it. We're a donor state. We send money to the federal government all the time. There's $52 billion that they want to give to us that we're not taking. And you may say, well, why aren't we taking Ideology. We don't want to see President Barack Obama succeed. We don't, they don't want to see him get credit for doing the right thing for their community. The governor started out on the same plane, but he came around. Why did he come around? He said it was immoral not to provide this help to people when the federal government is paying 100%. We have until January to put together a system to say that we want to draw down that money. And that's why we're asking for these phone calls this summer. If we don't put together a program by January, what will we lose? We lose the first year of 100% participation from the federal government. That means they are paying 100% of the services, 100% of the need. And what else do we lose? Well, the hospitals will tell you, well, they expect that this will be implemented, so they're going to lose some of the money that they receive for charity care. So it's going to be harder for our hospital. We've got now a new graduation path where you can get a, a vocational education uh, path or a college education path. Well, there is some debate about how that's going to work, but at least we're trying to say, well, we don't want to keep seeing kids not graduate if they're not headed to college. There are some things for them, but there's something that we know is right and we know should be implemented, and that's the expansion of medical service for the media in our community. There's no question about that. If you look at every editorial page in the state, they've all said that this is what should have been done. They're saying it was shameful that Florida hasn't done it. We need you to continue to be vigilant. I can tell you we will in the House, and we're going to work hard, continue to work hard, to make sure we're fighting for you every step of the way. It's been vilified as Obamacare. I've heard the President say, hey, listen, call it what you want. You know, one of our colleagues in, uh, in the Florida Senate, former colleague Tony Hill, said, hey, uh, you can follow whatever you want to. Somebody got to care. <laughs> so it might as well be Call it Obamacare. That's fine. Okay, so we're here. And we now have the opportunity to draw down. And, and, and I don't think there was enough emphasis on that first letter. B. Billions of dollars from the federal government. Now, why is this important? The 100% coverage that the, uh, that the federal government is going to be providing for us here in the state of Florida frees up four years worth of dollars that we do not have to dedicate dedicate to health care costs. Now what does that mean? Think about where we can reallocate those dollars. You know, how many streets have you seen that need to be repaid? How many bridges here in the state of Florida need, need to be reinforced? Uh, we have a grade nationally as a country of D minus for our infrastructure. We have eleven billion dollars just in this county of water infrastructure that we need to renew. So think about all the money that we could be reusing and what we could be reusing before. You know, um, reinforcing and, and reallocating those dollars back into the classroom as we all know we need. We thank God that uh, Pastor Reed is here with us tonight and we greet you, we welcome you. My son already has welcomed you. Open up the doors, and we thank God for uh, Representative uh, McGee. Hey, man, uh, that is doing a great job here with us. And of course, our man, our main man. Amen. Uh, we thank God for Senator Bullard. He is doing an outstanding job. Now, Thomas Jefferson penned probably one of the most important phrases of all time. He said, "Life." liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those very words, that phrase, is found in our Declaration of Independence. That's the document that drives all of us. 
So now the question is, what does the Declaration of Independence, that phrase, has to do with Medicaid expansion? That phrase, ladies and gentlemen, is the actual phrase that defines who we are and what we fight for as a nation. I have yet to see people who are ill, sick, fight, and stand up for that phrase when they don't have the energy. Medicaid expansion gives them the opportunity to fight for that phrase. We first have to have a healthy nation in order to make that happen. $52 billion. There are currently 19 million people in the state of Florida. If there are 19.4 million people in the state of Florida, and there's $52 billion on the table, my math tells me that there's enough money to insure the entire state more than once. If my math is correct, I pay for my health insurance, $8.34 per month. And that's for my entire family. We have access to the best health care you can possibly imagine. For $8.34, multiply that 19.4 million times, and ask yourself, do you even hit $51 billion or $52 billion? When have you ever known someone to say no to $52 billion? I wouldn't even say no to $50.